You might think technology is the great leveller and that ones and zeros don't have racial bias. Google's Photos app apparently automatically labeled a black couple as gorillas. You'd be wrong. It's common knowledge that this algorithm is racially biased. As technology races further and faster ahead, is the world in danger of automating racism? All kinds of structural inequality are reflected in our AI systems. And what can be done to fix it? Sunday, I deep clean the car. The sanitization of stuff, you know, is even more important. For Pa Man Jang, keeping his car clean is vital. Working as an Uber driver supported his family and relatives back home in the Gambia until he lost his job. Pa believes he's a victim of racial bias built into Uber's software. Last April, he got a message from Uber. After my shift finished one night, came home, um, I was looking at my emails and I saw one that says like, your account has been permanently deactivated. I thought it was just like a computer mishap. Following public concerns about customer safety, Uber introduced a new system in 2020 to verify drivers' identities. Periodically, drivers are asked to upload selfies, which are checked against photos supplied when they first joined Uber. Despite providing numerous selfies, Pa says Uber's algorithm failed to match them to his profile. I didn't think much of the whole thing because I thought if a human being reviews it, it'll be clear, I'll be back online the next morning. But Pa says his account remained deactivated. He later discovered he was far from the only ethnic minority driver to have experienced this indignity. I knew from the stories that I, I come across online that some, some other black people have got um, the same experiences. With, with the Uber um, algorithm. Uber employs at least 70,000 drivers in the UK, 52% of whom are from an ethnic minority. <laughs> pa and a handful of other drivers are taking Uber to court for unfair dismissal. They allege Uber's algorithm discriminated against them because of the color of their skin. The company denies these claims and says it uses a robust system of human review to ensure decisions about livelihoods are not made without oversight. Many technologies have a history of embedded racism. In the 1970s, Kodak Color Film was unable to capture darker skin tones accurately. The company only fixed this after chocolate makers complained its photos weren't doing their products justice. The racist history behind facial recognition. Techno-racism. In recent times, Microsoft, Facebook and Google have all had high-profile problems with their technology. Just recently, Facebook's AI got it terribly wrong when it put the label primates on a video of black men. So what is going wrong? The simple answer is technologies are trained using publicly available data sets which do not include sufficient data from ethnic minorities. The problems of the world include all kinds of structural inequality. And those problems are reflected in the data that we're using to train our AI systems. It's commonly believed that technology is neutral and free of bias. So one of the things that I write about is, a, is an idea that I call techno-chauvinism. It's the idea that technology is superior, that technological solutions are superior. As the world puts greater faith in technology, embedded biases are affecting black people in all aspects of their lives. During the COVID pandemic, pulse oximeters have been essential in measuring blood oxygen levels. But then researchers discovered that they gave flawed readings for black patients. According to the researchers who discovered this bias, it was very possible that darker skinned patients were turned away and sent home to self-monitor because medical practitioners thought that they were doing well. So this is one example of how racial bias 
can really be a matter of life or death. I don't actually think that the creators intended to be racist. I think that they were probably a group of light-skinned developers who tested it on themselves and said, oh, it works for us, it must work for everybody. And if you want to buy a house, software might also discriminate on the basis of your skin color. Brooklyn native Rochelle Farool moved to Philadelphia in 2015, hoping to buy a home here. Research in the US found that older credit scoring algorithms used by some mortgage lenders favored particular financial behaviors that are more common among white people. Black applicants for home loans were 80% more likely to be rejected than white applicants from similar backgrounds. So what can be done to fix the problem of racial bias with computers? Data journalist Meredith Broussard and her colleague Thomas Adams are working on a solution. Even if people don't think that race data is being used, the computer may actually be using race data because AIs are making all these decisions. They're fighting fire with fire by designing a unique set of software tools to identify bias embedded within technologies. Once you set the standard, then you can refine the standard. But with, until you do that, you don't really know what's going on. I partnered with O'Neill Risk Consulting in order to come up with what we call a regulatory sandbox, which is a software system that companies are going to be able to use to test out their algorithms for bias in order to confirm that companies are not releasing biased algorithms into the world. However, Observers worry that tech companies cannot be trusted to police themselves. For many companies, reducing racial bias will align with their bottom line. However, in the instances when reducing racial bias does not align with the bottom line, it might be necessary to regulate those companies. For many, there's only one way to ensure that systemic racism isn't built into the digital future much tighter regulation. We're at an interesting inflection point right now. Some of the changes that would need to happen to combat racial bias include government regulatory agencies to have more resources to take action. But so far, only the EU has started to get serious about policing tech companies, big and small. A white paper on artificial intelligence it's proposing a groundbreaking principle. The higher the risk posed by an AI system to fundamental rights, the stricter the oversight rules. I do think the EU's draft regulations are an important step. There still are some concerns because it assumes that we have a shared understanding of what risk is and how to make those calculations. Without effective regulation and more concerted self-policing, the old scourge of racism risks blighting the new digital future. I am Tamara Jokes Bohr, U.S. policy correspondent at The Economist. If you'd like to learn more about medtech bias, you can read my piece by clicking on the link. And if you'd like to watch more of the Now and Next series, you can click on the other link. Thank you for watching, and please do not forget to subscribe.